When your body gets too hot or too cold, it has a lot of work to do. Once your sympathetic nervous system detects a temperature change, it needs to communicate with your skin and blood vessels to warm you up or cool you down. It's no easy task. So in order to cool ourselves when we're hot, um, we direct more blood flow to the skin surface and with the aid of sweating you can use evaporative cooling to cool your body down. Meet Dr. Anna Stanowitz and Dr. Jody Graney, two researchers at Pennsylvania State University. With 20 plus published articles each, their combined research efforts have been cited over 800 times. Currently, Drs. Stanowitz and Graney are studying how the body responds to environmental stress with a focus on older adults. We're looking at how aging affects the skin blood flow and skin sympathetic nerve activity responses to whole body heat stress. As you get older, your body becomes less efficient at heating and cooling itself. Dr. Stanowitz and Graney are studying what exactly happens when your body heats and cools itself. They're committed to finding interventions to help combat the problems that might arise with those processes as you age. The biggest thing is that older adults when they're exposed to environmental heat stress, have a greater increase in cardiovascular risk. So their, their cardiovascular system just has to work harder. We're really focused on understanding the mechanisms underlying that increase in risk and to think about potential intervention strategies that might mitigate that risk. To actually monitor and detect activity in the nervous system, Doctors Stanowitz and Graney do the following. Put the test subject in a water profuse suit. A tight fitting suit coated with tubes filled with water that precisely heat or cool the skin of the subject as needed. So if we want to do resting studies to simulate heat waves or, or other types of hot environments, we pump hot or cold water through these tubes into a series of coiled tubes that are sewn inside these specialized water perfused suits. That clamps their skin temperature at whatever temperature we want, and then their core temperature slowly starts to rise. So we can really tightly control the thermal load on the subject. Um, we want the suit to be making good contact with your skin so that we can tightly control your skin temperature. Monitor skin temperature using thermocouples. We're gonna affix these to six different sites on your skin. Monitor heart rate using an EKG. Connect a pre-amplifier to the leg to amplify the signals from the nervous system. Because that nerve signal that we're recording is very, very small, so we need to amplify it many thousands of times. Insert two electrodes in the leg to send signals through the limb and be able to record the responses of nerves in the leg. Once all of this is set up, Dr. Stanowitz and Graney spend about 35 to 40 minutes sending signals through the leg and they hear this sound. This is what it sounds like. Yeah, and so again, that's nervous system activity going from her foot back to her brain. While recording this sound and changing the skin temperature of the individual, they can monitor the data visually. You can see as Jody's moving the electrode, we're seeing changes here. To keep an eye on the cardiovascular system, they are simultaneously monitoring blood flow, body temperature, skin temperature, heart rate, and heart rhythms. Getting a recording that is usable for our purposes generally takes about 30 to 45 minutes. Using this data, they can actually track the nervous system's response to temperature changes, discovering how it interacts with the cardiovascular system. So why is this research important? We need to know what's happening in our bodies because knowing is half the battle. Understanding what is or isn't happening in these systems will help us understand how to lower the risk of medical problems. And once we have that info, we can start to develop action plans for healthy living. These studies can result in practical help for real people. And that's the key focus of ACSM. Our members and certified professionals make a difference every day. Their groundbreaking research and collaboration drives innovation and progress across the dimensions of science, practice, education, and policy. To learn more about our research and to find practical tools for staying healthy, visit acsm.org. Thank you.